Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind-the-scenes science collections and research at Chicago's Field Museum. My name is Sabine Hundorf. I am an assistant curator of fungi in the botany department at the Field Museum. I study Ascomycete fungi. They are another large group of fungi other than the mushrooms that form plant diseases and are saprobes. They decay all kinds of plant matter and animal products. The Ascomycete fungi uh, are overlooked basically because they're small. The fruiting bodies, which would be equal to a mushroom, they are about the size of a head of a pin. The only time you might see them is if you know what to look for. You'll see them in little tiny clusters growing on uh, various plant parts. Well, ascomycetes are found all over the world and in virtually every habitat that we've looked. They occur in the tropical forests, in temperate forests, in grasslands. Anywhere the plants occur, that's where you can find ascomycete fungi. I myself have collected them in the United States and in Puerto Rico and French Guiana, in Costa Rica, New Zealand. When we prepare for a research trip, we will be going to a forest site that will be hopefully pristine. And my favorite kinds of trips are going into places that are field stations so that we can work on site in the tropical forest. This way we can have a place right there to collect and to also process our specimens. I don't collect earlier than say 9 o'clock in the morning because there's not enough light in the forest to actually see the fungi. So I'll wait till 9 or so. And then we will take a trail, if we're lucky enough to be in a place that has well-marked trails, and find a place that has a lot of dead wood on the ground, and start looking on the wood to see if we can locate any signs of the fungi, any fruiting bodies. We usually carry a hand lens, and the hand lens is your main way of seeing if there's any ascomycete fungi with fruiting bodies on the wood in the field. If I find any wood with fruiting bodies, I'll cut it into a two or three inch piece, and then I will bag it up in a paper bag, put a little number on it to indicate where I've collected it from, and then put it in my collecting bag. Some of the wood that we collect is well decayed and soft, and so that can just be basically broken apart by hand. But a lot of it is very hard and dense wood, and I hate to leave a fungus behind, and so I carry around a number of tools. Got a hammer and chisel, pruning shears, a foldable knife, and a foldable saw. I've never had to leave a really good fungus behind in, in the forest. Once we've collected for maybe two or three hours, we head back to camp for an afternoon of looking through our portable microscopes to see if there's any spores. We only take back the things that are actually in good fruiting condition, that are not old or immature. When we get back to the lab, any specimens that we don't wish to culture from, they will be frozen so that any insects are killed. Anything that we wish to try to culture and grow, we bring back to the lab and can get the spores to germinate on agar medium. This way we have not just the fruiting body that's dried, but we also have a living part of the organism that can be grown at any time that we want to have more material. The culture may be used for DNA sequencing. The culture also provides us with another stage in the development of the fungus. We'll basically do the same kind of thing that we did in the field. We will look at a dried specimen with the fungus on it. You look at the structure of the fruiting bodies under the dissecting scope and then take up a fruiting body off and put it onto a microscope slide and observe the structures. And this time we'll be doing it so that we can take photographs of it, digital images of the structures. The sac, the ascus, that will hold the ascospores, the spores themselves. We use these characteristics to identify the organism. They are largely unknown, and so this would be the first step in being able to work with them at, at an ecological level. 
One of the goals of my work is to produce a field guide to the ascomycete fungi. We capture a lot of images of structures of the different fungi, and each fungus then will get a plate of images that I produce for it. It will include an image of the fruiting body, an image of the ascus, and an image of the ascospore, and any other characteristic that might aid somebody in the identification. We're putting together 200 of the more common fungi that occur on wood in tropical habitats to produce this field guide that will aid in our own collecting and in for uh, our colleagues in the field.